I love the smell of coffee in the mornings. The smell of coffee is just incredible. I don't know how anyone can't like coffee. You didn't like coffee recently. Yeah, not up until probably four, five months ago. And I just made myself drink it until I liked it. So I was determined to be adult. <laughs> I forgot to pay. <laughs> Thank you. Flat white. Cheers. This morning's order before WOD. I went for a flat white. I haven't had a flat white in ages. And I think it's more just the texture and how they do the milk. It's just kind of like a latte, just a fancy latte. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. What is a flat white? Yeah. If you watched the Fraser versus Thrown In video like two videos ago, and where I took the drone up like above this whole kind of Stonely Park, there's so much open space, so they do like track racing. There's some insane cars going past. Oh! Hey! Okay? Hey! You alright? What up? You alright? How are we doing, YouTube? I tell you something, I slept like almost too well last night. You know when you're in like a crazy deep sleep and you sleep for hours. You wake up and your whole body just is still asleep. Nothing a little CrossFit can't fix. What is going on team? Craig Ritchie back with another commentary and you've probably already seen it in the title. It probably says like how to bulletproof your shoulders or shoulder warm up or something along those lines because I just want to show you the four kind of main exercises that I've been doing before every single workout for around the last two weeks now just to kind of get my shoulders prepped and ready for the session ahead. Shoulder health is kind of key for longevity in CrossFit. Major key alert. It's a multi-axial ball and socket joint held in by the rotator cuff and the glenoid labrum, also known as kind of the glenoid ligament, which makes it very unstable. And obviously through CrossFit, we put a huge amount of stress through the shoulders, especially when we're, when we're doing things like butterfly pull-ups, heavy clean and jerks, heavy snatch, any sort of kipping movements. So it's kind of the main area in CrossFit that gets damaged or injured through overuse. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is kind of move one and two that I use. It's PVC pipe passovers and then around the worlds. Just a great way to open up the shoulders and upper back. It will free off the labrum if it's got tight over time. It will start to kind of get blood to the muscles that are surrounding the shoulders and upper back, which ultimately means more activation in the shoulders when you first come to lift, which means then more strength along with a decreased chance of injury. The second move is just to warm up the rear doubts and get them activated, get the blood in those, because they're very supportive, especially in a lot of things like snatch and cleans. The way you perform this is you have your hands pretty wide, you'll pull it up, keeping your elbows kind of in the same plane, and then you'll internally rotate your shoulders and pull it against your body to get kind of a full contraction of the rear doubt. Three or four sets of 20 reps should be enough to kind of really get them warm. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly jump out of the commentary just to like explain why it's important to just activate the rotator cuff. The reason why is because what the rotator cuff does is obviously support your shoulder joint, help with external rotation, internal rotation, but also it helps when you get to about 90 degrees, it helps prevent impingement between your humerus bone and the acromion process. So there's a subacromial space that then if you, if your rotator cuff's not firing properly, this is where a lot of people tend to get a lot of pain because it's not retracting your humerus into the shoulder joint to allow more subacromial space for you to then get the shoulder up above your head. All right, let's carry on with our, uh, our uh... Welcome back to the commentary. Basically those first kind of few moves were just for general warming up the shoulders and getting a bit of mobility in the shoulders. These next two moves are kind of more specific towards warming up the rotator cuff, which is made up of the muscles supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. Now, I see so many people do face pulls and I see so many people do face pulls wrong. I'm just gonna rewind this video a little bit just to show you the main thing you do when you're setting up to do this move to get the most activation out of the muscles. And it's right here. So what you'll see me doing is first I'll retract my shoulders and then I'll depress my shoulders. What this does is put your scapula and your humerus in the most optimal position to activate the rotator cuff properly. The thing is with this move and warming up your rotator cuff in general is you want to keep the weight really really light because they're so small muscles. If you use too much weight then the larger muscles that surround them and support them will end up taking over and the exercise will just become pointless. So kind of keep the weight below 5 kilos if you can. And again 3 sets 20-ish reps. 
and this final move is probably my favorite out of all of them and it's a lot tougher than it actually looks what you want to do is drive your elbows and your index finger against the wall and then just sustain that pressure throughout the movement when putting your hands above your head this is a really good upper back and rotator cuff warm up and trust me if you if you do like 10 or 15 reps and you're really pushing back against the wall you can get a sweat on with this i would again recommend kind of three or four sets 10 to 12 reps of this i know this may have been a really really long commentary but i hope you did learn something and we'll talk to you guys later on in the video do leave a like rating it really does help the channel you guys are awesome oh. <laughs> that one's like knackering it's like a burn all right let's get on with the workout <laughs> He's using an old whiskey bottle as a water bottle because that's what I had in my car and I forgot my water bottle. This morning's workout is Laredo and we're going to do it in pairs. It's six rounds for time, 48 squats, 48 push ups, 48 walking, lunge steps, and then run 400 meters together. There's no I in team, but there's five I's and in independent brilliance. <laughs> there's an I in meat pie, and meat is an anagram of team. I don't know what the link is, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> Where's our team, Richie and Bradley? Power of Christ compels you <laughs> to do press up in the water. Go on. I would have got more footage of the training, but uh, as I said in the last video with Ade when it was like 27 degrees, I was like, we just got to make the most of it while we can, because uh, it's not going to be like it for very long. 26 degrees? UK's doing well this week, but apparently it's going to rain tomorrow, so we might as well make most of it whilst we can. And whilst we're out there, it just completely started to like tip it down. But we finished that workout in 24 minutes and like 30 seconds. To be honest with you, I thought like going into that workout, oh, it's all kind of nice body weight stuff and just moderate like length runs. It's not going to be that bad. It turned out to be like horrendous. Sometimes workouts on paper look quite straightforward and then when you actually do them they're not straightforward at all. <laughs> that one's my favourite. Yeah I want that one. Santa, please can I have the green Lamborghini? <laughs> if I could have one car in the whole entire world to drive around like for a day, it would be the Lamborghini Huracan. It's just beautiful. It was that green car that was going past. I'm not really a car person though, to be honest. I don't really like... I'm not really fussed about what car I drive. It's probably why I drive a Mini. Time to go get some food. What car would you have if you could have any car? Uh, Robin Reliant. <laughs> I like the Jag F-Type. Yeah, they're nice. The new ones. Yeah, yeah, they're really nice. Classy sort of manner. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so excited. Tomorrow we're going to like Sunday of V Festival at Western Park because, um, because <laughs> Justin V is playing, and we're just gonna go watch it. Like, there's there's nothing else to say about that. Also, there's something really exciting happening tonight. It's Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor. And uh, I'm gonna put my prediction on the table that Conor McGregor's gonna, he's gonna win this time. And once again, I'm gonna finish this video by saying thank you every single one of you guys who has ordered one of the part of the team t-shirts. You're watching this video on a Sunday or a Monday or whenever it is. The first batch of orders have gone out to be made and he guaranteed they'll be back within one week. So then within one week, I'll be sending them out to you guys, which is just super exciting. Like I'm so excited to show you guys like the process and all of the packages that will be on the floor. It's gonna be absolutely crazy. And then I'm gonna do this thing where once you've received your t-shirt, I would really love for you to like take a video of you outside the box wearing it, saying your name and where you're from, and then I'll do like a huge montage and put it all on this channel, which is gonna be epic. But anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I know it was kind of a long commentary. I've just finished editing it right now. It's now 11 o'clock at night. But sometimes I wanna like add purpose to my vlogs and really give you guys something to learn off. But yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next. Just have a okay. There you go. Thanks, mate. Have fun. I mean, that sounds more fun than just boxing. Lunchtime entertainment today is uh, sponsored by Rubik's Cube.
When we were young though, if we were ill, my mum used to give us warm lemonade. And That's so epic. Right. I think this is one thing I don't have the patience for. One thing. There. <laughs> I was about yeah. to say the same. <laughs>